Papers magazine. George is one of our most accomplished professors, and it was really gracious of him to agree to be our speaker today. Please join me now to welcome Professor George Saunders. Those who were kindest to you, I bet. 
It's a little facile maybe and certainly hard to implement, but I'd say as a goal in life, you could do worse than try to be kinder. Now, the million dollar question, why aren't we kinder? What's our problem? Here's what I think. Each of us is born with a series of built-in confusions that are probably somehow Darwinian. These are, one, we, we are central to the universe. That is, our personal story is the main and most interesting story, the only story, really. Two, we're separate from the rest of the universe. There's us, and then out there, all that other junk. Dogs and swing sets in the state of Nebraska, and low-hanging clouds, and, you know, other people. And three, we're permanent. Death is real. Okay, sure, for you, but not for me. Now, we don't really believe these things. Intellectually, we know better. But we believe them viscerally, and we live by them. And they cause us to prioritize our own needs over the needs of others, even though what we really want, deep in our hearts, is to be less selfish, more aware of what's actually happening in the present moment, more open, and more loving. So the second million dollar question, how might we do this? How might we become more loving, more open, less selfish, more present, less delusional, etc., etc.? Well, yeah, good question. And unfortunately, I only have three minutes left. So let me just say this, there are ways. You already know that because in your life, there have been high kindness periods and low kindness periods, and you know what inclined you toward the former and away from the latter. Education is good. Immersing ourselves in a work of art, good. Prayer is good. Meditation is good. A frank talk with a dear friend. Establishing ourselves in some kind of spiritual tradition. Recognizing that there have been countless really smart people before us who have asked these same questions and left behind really valuable answers for us. Now, one thing in our favor, some of this becoming kinder happens naturally with age. It might be a simple matter of attrition. As we get older, we come to see how useless it is to be selfish, how illogical, really. We come to love other people and are thereby counter-instructed in our own centrality. We get our butts kicked by real life, and people come to our defense and help us, and we learn that we're not separate and don't want to be. We see people near and dear to us dropping away, and are gradually convinced that maybe we too will drop away, someday, a long time from now. Most people as they age become less selfish and more loving. I think this is true. The great Syracuse poet Aidan Carruth said in a poem written near the end of his life that he was mostly loved now. And so a prediction and my heartfelt wish for you, as you get older, yourself will diminish and you will grow in love. You will gradually be replaced by love. If you have kids, that will be a huge moment in your process of self-diminishment. You really won't care what happens to you as long as they benefit. That's one reason your parents are so proud and happy today. One of their fondest dreams has just come true. You have accomplished something difficult and tangible that has enlarged you as a person and will make your life better from here on in forever. Congratulations, by the way. It starts out all puppies and rainbows, but then turns out to contain 
everything. There's a confusion in each of us, a sickness really, selfishness, but there's also a cure. So be a good and proactive and even somewhat desperate patient on your own behalf. Seek out the most efficacious anti-selfishness medicines energetically for the rest of your life. And do all the other things, of course, the ambitious things. Travel, get rich, get famous, innovate, lead, fall in love, make and lose fortunes, swim naked in a wild jungle river, after first testing it for monkey poop. But as you do, to the extent that you can, err in the direction of kindness. Do those things that incline you toward the big questions and avoid the things that would reduce you and make you trivial. That luminous part of you that exists beyond personality, your soul, if you will, is as bright and shining as any that has ever been. Bright as Shakespeare's, bright as Gandhi's, bright as Mother Teresa's. Clear away everything that keeps you separate from the secret luminous place. Believe it exists, come to know it better, nurture it, share its fruits tirelessly. And someday, in 80 years, when you're 100, and I'm 134, and we're both so kind and loving we're nearly unbearable, draw me a line, let me know how your life has been. I hope you will say, it has been so wonderful. Congratulations, class of 2013. I wish you great happiness, all the love, and glory, and a beautiful song.